In this video, I will talk about the homotopy perturbation method. We will discuss homotopy perturbation method for partial differential equation, ordinary differential equation, and integral equation. So let me just start homotopy perturbation method for a function first. There are three terms over here in uh, homotopy perturbation method. The first term is coming from topology. And the second term is coming from a topic called perturbation method. And the third term is method anyway. So what is homotopy? In topology, if we have two points, for example, from these two points, you can create a function. This is function f of x. And in topology, we can say that this function can be continuously transformed into another function g of x. This is called a topological functions. These are the topological uh, functions, for example. So how we define topology of these functions so that we can convert any function into a function g of x and g of x into another function f of x. For example, you try to make a circle. This circle can be converted into point by continuously deformation, this point, uh, this circle becomes a point. So it means that the circle is converted into the point and so on. Similarly, if we have a mug, for example, if we have a mug, some kind of mug, very rough drawing. In topology, this mug can be converted into a torus, a kind of donut. But there are certain conditions that it should, for example, mug can become a torus and torus can become a mug. So it's, it's a kind of rubber or maybe a kind of slime which uh, children usually play with, uh, with them. So it's a kind of that thing. So topology, this is the basic idea. Now the question is how I convert any function into another function by using some topology, H. We call it H. So we need some weights. For example, if I put one minus P, some weight over here, plus P, so we have, for example, a function of P over here. When P is equal to zero, you will get you will get some function f of x. And that function is your initial, initial function, or you may say where you start, either you start from a mug or either you start from a circle. It depends. Either you have a torus and from torus you come back to the mug. So you can see that we have p is equal to zero, one function. When we have p is equal to one, then this becomes zero. So we get h of one is equal to g of x. So there is some parameter and you can see that p should belong to 
zero to one, it should belong to the closed interval. So that as you change the value of, for example, zero to continuously, you transform, uh, you take that value from zero to one, you will get another function. This is the idea of homotopy in topology. How we can apply this method or this uh, topic or this um, idea for over case for ODs and PDs? So let me just start from the ODs. Suppose we have a differential equation. F of R is equal to zero. R belong to the domain. So here, the independent variable is R. You can take X as your independent variable. It depends what is your independent variable over here. So here we have a R. This function is a source function and capital A is your, the, is your operator. Then we also have a boundary conditions. For example, we have u, partial u by partial r is equal to zero. Here, for this case, r belong to omega, uh, this uh, symbol over here gamma. So in mathematics, we write it like this. For example, this is over domain. This is called omega. And this one is the gamma. This that is the boundary. Some people actually call that partial omega. This is also a kind of boundary. And B here denotes the boundary. So it means that it is a general, a general ODE, uh, OD or partial differential equation. And this is over boundary condition, which contains U or partial U by partial R. It depends either you have a, a Neumann boundary condition or you have a Robbins boundary condition or maybe Dirichlet boundary condition. Let me just split A into the operators. Suppose A is equal to, A is equal to, one is a linear operator or linear term, and another one is a nonlinear term, which is a function of U minus. So this is over A, for example. I put that into equation one. So we have L of U plus N of U minus F of R is equal to zero. So this is our most general form of a differential equation. As a mathematician, engineer, or physicist, usually when you want to introduce a new idea, you express your ODE or your differential equation in most general form. The actual problem can be anything like that. For example, we have d square y by dx square, dy by dx plus y square minus sine x is equal to zero. This is your actual problem. But as a mathematician, we may be call it as linear function. This is over nonlinear function. This is over, for example, source function, function of x. And similarly, you get the idea of differential equation. OK. Now, I want to apply homotopy perturbation method on this differential equation. So idea I already introduced over here. What we do, we define an operator H. 
which is a function of our solution and a parameter in mathematics we need a parameter uh, in uh, topology we need a parameter which is called p this is embedding parameter in homotopy analysis method for example in homotopy analysis method we usually have h cut over there so on so homotopy can be defined like this remember homotopy in topology we had 1 minus p function f of x plus p g of x what we do in differential equation we uh, replace this function with differential equations for example we may define a function linear operator over here and we de may define the second function which can be any differential equation i will talk about that how you define l and how you define another term over here so the idea is from topology so i formally write this as 1 minus p and then we have a simple problem you will write a simple problem of your equation number 2 the simple problem will be linear operator acting on v minus then we have an linear operator acting on initial guess u not so on plus then how you define a second part you can define a second part by taking your whole equation over here so i define over here for example my l which is a function of actually it is a function of u but but when we use uh, homotopy perturbation method then you get initial solution u not u1 so on so it should not be over uh, it should not be u over here it should be a function v that you already defined which is approximate solution so we write l of v plus n of v minus f of r equal to 0 that's how you define this is your simpler problem simpler problem or linear problem that can be easily solved this is your complete complete equation complete equation complete ode pd whatever your problem is so what we do i repeat again in topology we had a function and this was a g in homotopy perturbation we had a differential equation simpler part and the complete differential equation over here that's the idea of that's the idea of homotopy perturbation method for example when p is equal to 0 we have h v 0 that will be l of v linear operator acting on v minus l q not and when p is equal to 0 this term become 0 so this whole become 0 so what we have over here we have this 0 and you should put this equal to 0 so that you can get the differential equation so l of l acting on v minus l acting on u not that will be equal to 0 similarly when we have p is equal to p is equal to 
then we have v1 and we have the first term when i put p is equal to 1 so 1 minus 1 this is 0 so this term will survive and we have p which is 1 i don't need to write that over here l of v plus n of v minus f of r equal to 0. So what you see, you are getting first your solution from here, which will be your first solution. Then you move continuously to get u2, so on. And at the end, you add all these terms to get your final solution at p is equal to 1. We will talk about that. So what we have from all uh, these uh, calculation, we have, for example, V0, V1, V2, so on. We have all these solutions. So V, the, the complete solution can be written as V0 plus P V one plus P two V two so on. One thing you must remember if you are if you are confused in mathematics, remember that and keep this in your mind. Any function in mathematics can be written in a in a series form. So it is all about you, how you define your solution. For example, we have sine x, you can write the Taylor series of that. For example, we have ex, you can write the series, which is due to the Taylor, Maclaurin, or whatever the series you have, so on. So any, any function can be written as a series form. So here we have, all the solutions v0, v1, v2 from all these calculations and we get series form by embedding the parameter or introducing parameter v0, pv1, p2v2, so on. So this is our solution that we obtained from the analysis. Then we have, for example, exact solution of our differential equation that can be obtained when I put P approaches to one in this series, P V1, P2, V2, P3, V3, so on. So this will be equal to u. Here you can note that if I put p is equal to 0 over here, you are getting v is equal to v0, which is the initial approximation. And you can see that when, and this v0 corresponds to over this differential equation. When you have p is equal to 1, it means that we are here. And for this differential equation, we have this solution. And this solution actually corresponds to our complete solution. That's how the things go. This is very interesting uh, method. Variational iteration method that we studied before, that is also a very useful method. And homotopy perturbation method is also a very useful method to solve differential equation and integral equation. So in next video, in next few videos probably, I will solve first order ODE, ordinary differential equation, partial differential equation, and then integral equation. Thank you for watching.